Greetings, geography students. This lecture is going to be pretty comprehensive, I'm afraid. It's going to be on the continent of Africa with only one class per week. I had to look at the schedule of what time we have left and decide what areas of the world have the best bang for the buck, the most impact in your understanding of the world we live in. And there is a lot of fascinating stuff I could say about Africa. But the simple fact is we really only have about three more weeks after this to do anything useful, uh, really more like two. And you simply have to understand India and China with a nod to Japan. So that's what I'm gonna have to do with those two weeks. Um, so that leaves <laughs> a day to talk about Africa, a, a lecture. Um, so that's what this is gonna be. This is gonna be a 20 minute lecture on the continent of Africa, just to whet your appetite for your own studies, I hope. Now, the first thing to say about Africa is it is much bigger than most Americans think. If you look at Africa on a flat map, like a Mercator projection map, Africa is artificially smaller than a country like Asia or North America. Because remember, anytime you flatten out a spherical surface, you're going to stretch representations of the poles. And the equator is going to appear relatively small. And of course, the equator runs right through the middle of Africa. So that Canada, Russia, and even Antarctica will appear immense. But the fact is that Antarctica is a fraction of the size, less than half the size of the continent of Antarctica. And, uh, continent of Africa, my apologies, Antarctica is half the size of the continent of Africa, less than half the size. It is a very, very big continent. So if you wanna get a real fill for it, as always, get a globe and look at that. But Africa is an immense continent full of independent countries today. Those countries, with two exceptions, got their independence in the 1950s and mostly in the 1960s. Uh, the two countries that were never under the sway of colonialism were Ethiopia, over here on the eastern side of Africa, the Horn of Africa. That always was independent, although the Italians did conquer it briefly at the beginning of World War II. And a little country over here called Liberia, which was actually founded by former American slaves uh, with the help of the American Colonization Society. White racist Americans didn't want freed slaves staying in the United States, so they sent them back to Africa. That was the phrase. But one positive side effect was that these Africans who were sent back to Africa formed a democratic state and uh, one based on American constitutional and legal values that maintained its independence. So Liberia and Ethiopia. The rest of Africa, though, was under the sway of European powers. Britain and France had the most, but also the Belgian king controlled the Bel what, what was the Belgian Congo, now the Democratic Republic of Congo. The Germans had a couple of territories, Cameroon, Tanzania, Namibia. Today were German territories. But the British controlled much of Southern Africa and the Sudan and Egypt. France had control of most of Western Africa. Um, and the Portuguese, Mozambique, um, the uh, Spaniards, even Sao Tome and Principe uh, over here. Uh, so these colonial powers gave up their authority over these countries and gave them their independence in the 1950s, but especially the 1960s. So they have been independent countries 55, 60, 65 years. Most of them have not fared terribly well economically. Uh, South Africa, which actually was under white domination longer than most African countries, is a middling level economic power. They have two big cities uh, in South Africa, Pretoria and Johannesburg, that are pretty much modern cities like you'd see other places. Uh, Nigeria's capital, Lagos, is a very big city that's fairly modern. 
uh, Nairobi's capital, Nairobi, the capital of Kenya, fairly modern. Cairo, up in the north, are fairly modern cities, but they're very large cities with lots of very poor people in them. Much of Africa is very, very poor. Uh, the Central African Republic is probably the poorest country on earth. Now, one of the reasons they are poor is because of colonialism. The countries of Africa were mostly being used for natural resources to go back to the metropole, to the country that controlled them, the European country that controlled them. So they were there to provide minerals, gold, diamonds, tin, uh, bauxite for aluminum, uh, all kinds of other minerals, extractive minerals in particular, or in the case of some of the rainforests of Central Africa, uh, you know, ebony woods, things like that, ivory from elephants and other natural resources that could be exploited. So they were being stripped of their natural resources, which were being sent to the coast and sent to Europe, mostly, for where the real money was made. So when they got their independence, what industry they had were these extractive industries. But in the world market, on the free market worldwide, most of those are not really going to make your country rich. There, is, there are some countries up here in the northern littoral of Africa, these Arab countries we've already talked about, Libya, Algeria, do have oil down here. But that's about it. There's really not the, the black gold oil in most of Africa. Gold, diamonds in South Africa, uh, in Namibia a little bit. Uh, yes, the De Beers company is rich because of that. Sierra Leone over here on the east coast of, west coast of Africa, also a diamond producing country. But that doesn't really make your country rich. There's not so much diamonds and gold you can produce and it doesn't enrich an entire nation, just usually one company, De Beers. Another reason why, when these countries were created, they were zones of colonial empires originally, and they became independent, separate nations. So while it had been no big deal that Mali and Niger were zones of French West Africa for administrative purposes, it was a big deal when they became independent countries with their own governments and their own interests. They weren't coordinated anymore. But look at this. Mali, Niger, Chad. This has recently become the world's, one of the world's newest countries. South Sudan is now independent down here as of about eight years ago. South Sudan, Central African Republic. Um, Uganda, um, Rwanda. Zambia, Zimbabwe, Botswana, uh, Malawi. All of those countries are landlocked. Remember that word, landlocked? They do not have access to the sea. And if you run an extractive country that's used for taking, say, minerals out of it, and you have to ship your belongings, your goods to sell them to the seacoast, or you do, uh, the other countries that you have to ship them through are going to get a big cut of the value of those things. They won't let you ship them across them unless you give it to them. So uh, these countries are already hampered terribly by geography and the fact they're landlocked. Another issue, let's talk about the physical geography of Africa. Uh, Africa is a country mostly of plains. There are only a couple of major mountain regions in Africa. Right up here on the northwest coast, Morocco mostly, some of Algeria, are the Atlas Mountains. And you have the Ethiopian highlands of Ethiopia stretching down to Kenya and Tanzania. The Great Rift Valley of Africa. These are volcanoes mostly, and many of them still very active. Uh, so those are the mountainous regions of Africa. Now, Africa is mostly flat. But you'll notice the green, that's the lowest areas, is very close to the coast. And when you look at the key, you'll see that you quickly rise to a couple of thousand feet above sea level. You have to go like into the way into the Great Plains of America to get that high above sea level in the U.S. So these places already, they're another problem. Even if you have in Angola, say, for example, you've got to take it down a couple of thousand feet fairly quickly down cliffs to get to the coast. This was a real problem when they were laying railroad tracks. But anyway, 
Um, the physical geography of Africa, very low up here on the littoral of Africa, low down here in Mozambique, but mostly high plateaus, high plains uh, in Africa. But Africa is by no means a uniform place climate-wise. Let's take a look at the climate. What you see here speaks volumes. That red is the Sahara Desert, the world's largest desert. Not the driest desert, that's the Atacama in South America, but a vast desert with thousands of miles of bark and sand dune fields in it. Intense heat. Um, the uh, area right below it, this is called the Sahil right here, this zone in between, which is semi-arid. But then you get grasslands in this part of, the, of Africa. These are grasslands. These are areas that are savanna, high grasslands, rather like our Great Plains. When you've seen those nature documentaries about Africa, where you see the gazelles and the wildebeests and the elephants and all that, you're watching savanna land. So this is a lot like the Great Plains here. But what about this, this dark green? That is tropical rainforest. So when you think of the jungles in Africa, that's it right there. Central, uh, the uh, Congo here, uh, and the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, Cameroon, uh, and so on, right in here. This very much the the tropical rainforest. This is the Namib Desert here. Very dry, very hot desert. Uh, right down here, you get a kind of Mediterranean climate. That is exceptional. That's one of the reasons South Africa is one of the richest place, the richest place in South um, in Southern in Africa, is because Europeans came here and said, "Hey, that area is a lot like the Mediterranean. We know what will grow here. We know what will can farm here." So that's what's going on there. Europeans made this a very productive zone during the colonial era. Uh, combine that with the gold and diamonds found in South Africa, and it is uh, the richest country by far in all of Africa. Precipitation. What's going on there? Well, here's your answer. Look at the intense amounts of rain that the Democratic Republic of Congo gets. This is why you have that huge tropical rainforest in this region. Look up here, virtually nothing. That's the Sahara Desert. Why? Because of the Ethiopian highlands. Remember the orographic effect? Rain comes and falls here. These, these highlands block the monsoon rains that come off the Indian Ocean. They dump rain here. But because they dump it here, when they hit the highlands, it's bone dry and hot when it goes up there farther north. So that's why you have the uh, Sahara Desert in the north of Africa. All right. Uh, by the way, this is Madagascar down here. You'll see tropical rainforest on one side, desert on the other. That'll tell you immediately there are mountains right here on the island of Madagascar that dump the rain on one side and make bone dry hot air on the other orographic effect. See it all over the earth. Okay, population in Africa. By far the densest pl place on Africa for human population is the Nile River Valley. <clears throat> Cairo. I think Cairo is the biggest city in Africa. I'm pretty sure it is. But from ancient Egyptian times, you remember studying that in history, Egypt is the gift of the Nile. Well, this is the best farmland in Africa, with the exception of the few areas down here in southern Africa. And you can see that southern Africa, Cape Town, Johannesburg, Durban, those are big cities that, again, the prosperous southern African climate and, and uh, the like, very much like southern Europe. Uh, the whites knew what to do with it when they got there in colonialism in the 1600s and turned it fairly prosperous. Uh, right along here on the coast, the city of Accra, the city of Lagos, Nigeria, Abidjan. These are p cities crowded with millions 
uh, especially since the Green Revolution of the 1950s and 60s, when the food supply greatly expanded in Africa because of new agricultural techniques and, and engineered crops from the West. Uh, the populations of Africa have exploded in the last 60 years, but there's not traditional things for them to do in the village. So they moved to these vast cities here on the coast of Africa here. All right. Land use and resources. That big purple blotch says very limited use. That's the Sahara Desert. And by George, there's almost nothing that happens there. But here you see the oil wells, the Libyan and Algerian oil wells, telling you that the oil industry is there. Uh, you see uh, some mining agriculture pro uh, uses there. These ingot-like things tell you mineral resources and a lot of minerals, titanium, zirconium, I mean, rare earth stuff, uh, the kind of things you need for modern industry, a lot of them, copper, huge amounts of copper, are, are come out of this portion of Africa. But remember, the European empires of the old days, that's what they wanted. They wanted these metals out of Africa, and they got them. And the industries they left behind for the newly independent countries are pretty much that. All right, I think that's 18 minutes, uh, no, 16 minutes. I'm afraid that's where we're going to have to leave Africa. I really feel I must get you up to speed on Iran, uh, on Afghanistan. These places are very much in the news. You need to know about them. You need to know about the two most populous countries on earth, and those are India and China. Uh, China and India both are economic uh, up-and-comers, who will be rivals to the United States in your lifetime, I suspect. So we're going to move on. I am sorry that's all the time we have for Africa. It's not like it's not a fascinating place with very worthy people to study. If we had another month, we'd spend a lot of time on Africa. But with two more days of classes, essentially, I've got to get you through Iran, Afghanistan, India, and China. So we're moving on there. God bless.